Okay, we got a two man show. Let's, let's roll. Hey, Steve, just uh, Kelly Lyle with the Colorado one. What did you see on the first day of practice that you like? What didn't you like? And where do you go from here? Well, Kelly, as you know, I probably repeat myself a lot on this stuff. Like, I, you know, I really don't pay much attention, uh, you know, put a lot of credence until we put the pads on on Thursday. But uh, I thought they came out, ran around, um, executed uh, install today pretty well, took care of each other, competed, had some fun, got a lot of fundamental work done, which was tremendous. But these practices today and Tuesday are mostly fundamental. Um, and, you know, some, but not a lot of super competitive stuff you know, cause there's no pads. So, um, yeah, I mean, I thought, I thought they picked up and, and, and had a great, men, great attitude, great mentality. And uh, I thought I had a lot of fun out there on a Saturday morning. Coach, you had a little bit of everything. You start out with gray skies, you get a little bit of a snowstorm, you get some sunshine by the end. Yeah. Uh, is it just good to get started and, and get yeah. some of the new guys in the program acclimated to what you're doing? You want to play ball, man. We're playing ball, and it's fun. Um, yeah, the weather was, it was – I got up this morning, the sun was kind of, oh, this could be a great day. And all of a sudden, it just like the clouds settled right over where we were. Stayed that way until literally the very end of practice, and now it's gorgeous out again. So it was hilarious. Yeah. You do have some guys changing positions. Can you go over the decision? Like Justice is now a wide receiver. Yeah. You have some guys doing that. How, how do – what went into those decisions? Well, I mean, Justice is a loves football, wanted to get on the field. And he's got really good hands. He's a really smart guy, so we got him playing receiver. We got, um, uh, you know, Thomas Pannunzio playing receiver again, which uh, we're excited about that. Um, trying to think off the top of my head if there's anybody else that uh, we switched around a little bit. I can't remember right now. What does it look like to be the main two? Um, yeah. It was also acclimation day for your two new coaches. Uh, yeah. Good to get them out there communicating with everybody else. Yep. 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 In fact, they're waiting on me upstairs. You know, we're going to um, watch the tape a little bit here. And so, yeah, I mean, everybody's anxious to get out there and get going. There's nothing like it. No matter, no matter how many days you prepare for that practice until you get out in that field, get in that groove, it's just different, you know, and every year, how many years I've been coaching, I always say to myself, boy, it's, it's always different when you get on that practice field. It's just different, you know. Even if you have the ability to do some stuff out in the field and in, in, in winter workouts, not the same. Steve, we've got a couple guys that you we're going to be talking to after this that are both came in here as graduate transfers. Certainly, that's become a huge, as you've talked about, a big pipeline around the country, people coming and going. Yeah. What is it in your mind when you talk to these guys that you think they're looking for when you have discussions? What are you looking for in them? And what do you think they're looking for in a progress? Yeah, I mean, I think when you get involved with a graduate transfer student, I mean, you know, for whatever the dynamic was, where they were, uh, they want to get on the field and they want to play. So, you know, I think when they're looking, they have to be careful that they're looking for a place that's not recruiting them to be depth, but recruiting them to be a player on the field. And I just think from my standpoint, you know, I'm, my intention when I bring a fifth year player is uh, um, to have a guy that, that, that I feel um, can be the starter. Um, and I think those are good marriages. I think if you get an older guy that, and they, they transfer and they get there and they're not playing, then there's a frustration level there, you know? So, and as a coach, if you're taking a roster spot that way, there, you know, on a guy that has no future with you because he's only a one year shot then that's not good either. So I think the best, usually ones or although it's now changing, you know, when you had some previous knowledge uh, with somebody, either you had them in the program you were at before or somebody in your staff did, and you really know exactly who and what you're dealing with. And we've been very fortunate here and very fortunate where I was before that we've had great, great fifth year guys. Now we're going to go into this whole new world where now mm -hmm. it's going to start to become, you know, potentially second, third, fourth year guys. Um, so football, college football is changing. Uh, I'd like to tell you it's for, that's for the good. I don't, I don't, I think the fifth year things for the good. I don't think the other things for the good at all. Um, and, and I think it's going to become problematic and, um, but it's different, it's, you know, and I, I'll say this, if you have voids, if you, if you inherit a program that has some voids from it, it does give you an opportunity to fill those voids. Um, used to be you'd go in the junior college market and, uh, but now you can go into the, 
the portal market. So, you know, um, it can help you from that standpoint, but like anything else, I think you need to have a good plan and you probably have to have some knowledge of who you're dealing with. How much of a role do you think the academic side of thing plays in that? I mean, obviously, at least in theory, they're coming to pursue a master's degree. How many go through and complete that? You know, it varies player to player, but do you feel like academics maybe plays a bigger role in these transfers, these, especially the graduate transfers than it does when you're recruiting a kid out of high school? Probably not. I think that's why the NCAA passed that legislation now where you can pick up a second major. So you can take undergraduate courses because exactly what you said, you know, in case a guy is not really interested in finishing that master's, but there are got a lot of guys that are, but I mean, I think now you have an option for the guy that is looking to, you know, continue to take undergraduate courses. Um, it might be, maybe they're going to come in and play for a fall and then, and then go on to the NFL, you know, um, it, I think there's a menu for everybody, so to speak. Um, you know, I think if you're smart, you come in and you, and you start that master's and you get a chance to finish that master's, you know, um, but it, it, it's all different scenarios, you know, and I think it's, it's hard because the graduate programs, you know, want to see guys come in and finish. And I mean, realistically, if you're a player and you come in and you've got your degree and you play in the fall and you start a master's, which I think is a great thing. And then all of a sudden you have a chance to go play in the NFL. I mean, you got to pursue that opportunity and then you can come back and finish your master's, you know? So I think there's, it's, it's all over the lot right now. And, um, and I just think it's great. And the universities can make that opportunity available. I mean, guys are, or, you know, what, what you don't want is the guys that come in and just in, in not put enough attention and focus on their academics. But then if that happens, they wouldn't be eligible for a bowl game either. You know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm for guys extending and continuing education. I think that's a good thing. Thanks. Hey, Steve, you had a, you know, four transfers yourself coming in. It was like you said, today was, it's kind of, you'll know more when you put on the pads, but to get these guys acclimated, a Picozzi, a Crump, um, Anthony, I don't know, I tried to pronounce his last name yet. Those guys, are, is this an important day for them, though, just to kind of get around their new teammates and get a feel? Yeah, I mean, what I try to do is guard myself against overthinking it day one and two. Because mm -hmm. I've just seen it too many times where, you know, I like to look at it at the end of the week, you know, like we're going to go through today. Tuesday, Thursday, next Saturday, then, then I'm going to take, you know, I'll take, after next Saturday, I'll take a good hard look at some of the new guys, give them a chance to acclimate and get pads on and all those other kind of things, you know, so not, I try not to ride the roller coaster too much on these practices, um, you know, cause I've been fooled too many times before. When you go back to last year, you know, eight game scheduled, you only get to play four. Do you try to do a more, a little bit more live situational scrimmage type thing in, in spring camp? to make up or you just don't look back, just move forward? I mean, we're going to do a lot of live stuff. Um, every Saturday will be a full scrimmage. Uh, you know, I mean, we're just, we got a lot of, we got a lot of stuff going on. There'd be a lot of tackling, you know, you, you have regulations mm -hmm. by the NCAA on what days can be tackled, what can't, what are 50% tackle days, what are full tackle days. So obviously we follow all those rules, but uh, I think spring, spring should be extremely fundamental. And I think it should be, uh, you know, uh, tackling, play the game. And one of the reasons we go early is so that, God forbid, you have a couple of injuries, you still can get a lot of them back. Maybe not every injury you can get back, but you can get a lot of injuries back if you start early. If you wait and push your spring too late, things like, you know, you know certain kind of foot surgeries or shoulder surgeries, you, you run the risk, you're probably not getting them back for the start of the season. So there's a lot that thought that goes into when you start practice. I really like the early starts to spring ball now, um, you know, be, because of that. You know, you think about a labral tear, it could take a guy four to six months to come back from a labral tear. So, you know, the later you go, you know, you do that, you, you do something like that. And, and at the end of April, you're probably borderline to be ready for the start of the season. And those things, you know, they can happen fairly often. Anyways, that's just a philosophical thing. Yeah. So what you're saying is it's a normal spring for you. It has nothing to do with anything that you didn't maybe get a play last year. This is the way spring would run no matter if you had a normal year. You know, I'm, nothing's emphatic. I have had a few times where when an extremely veteran team, um, maybe not tackling quite as much, 
but what we will do is take care of some of our really veteran players. We don't have to put them in every tackle situation, but we have a vast majority of our, our young team. We need to develop a lot of those skill sets and just some just sheer toughness, you know, where you can, I mean, you get in a preseason camp, you might have one line scrimmage. That's it. Well, we'll probably have five, six of them here. We'll work on third and ones and fourth and ones routinely. Those are the things that, you know, I think are really important in spring practice. And, you know, you try to keep it as safe as you can, but, you know, you got to develop your football team. Um, you know, if a back can't run through contact, then when do they learn how to run through contact? You know, or the linebacker can't knock a guy back, tackle him and knock him back. You got to do that. You got to feel that, you know, so that's all a part of it. But, you know, like Scott Patchen sitting over here, Scott Patchen played a lot of football. I mean, I'm not sure how many tackling deals he needs to be in right now. But on the flip side of that, we might have a young guy that needs a whole bunch of that. So, we, you know, we use our head here. We're, we try to be really smart in, in, in who, how many reps certain guys get, how much tackling, how much contact. That's not the same. for everybody. Yeah. Eddie, you want to jump in since you came in late? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry if you already answered this, Steve, but I know you're just talking about how good kind of the energy just around this team was over the winter. Just how did you kind of see that translate to today? Yeah, I thought I thought that was the positive I saw today. There was great energy, excitement, uh, hustle, um, work habits. I mean, what that's about what you get out of non-padded practices, right? And uh, I thought guys working hard on their fundamentals or toolbox, so to speak. So I thought it all, I thought, I thought today was extremely, I, I was absolutely pleased with what we did, what we got done and what the expectation was to get done. I thought it was very appropriate today. Um, and I'm, I'm confident Tuesday will be the same. What happens is when you get to those, you know, start Thursday when we're in full pads and you get more into that grind, that's when it starts to become a grind. When all of a sudden, you know, you're, you know, you're coming to practice, you're in, you're, you're going to be in a, a real physical day. And then, then we start to, you know, right around practice, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine, you start to get a little bumped up and, you know, you, you're sitting there and, and then you start to find out what the passion level is. Everybody's, everybody's pretty fired out, to, fired up today with no pads on, you know. <laughs> it's obviously a small sample size, but just what can you say about how John Budmeyer's kind of meshed with the guys so far? Yeah, I mean, John's done a great job and, you know, he's a good, good, really good football coach, good quarterback coach, good coordinator, you know, good, good person. So, you know, he's got fire to him and yeah, I mean, all good, you know, and we got a good staff. I mean, everybody, you know, everybody's out there working, you know, we'll see <laughs> when he starts to get more competitive on Thursday, right? All right. I think that's it. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Guys, Steve. thank you. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Sorry about that, Mike. I tried to get in right at 1130. No, and as soon as I saw it pop up, I yeah, at least you got a camera now. Yeah, that's true. It's working. Yeah, there we go. It's not good for you guys. You got to see me. No, it's all right. I'm good with it. <laughs> if you get, can handle looking at me, you can handle looking at me. So. <laughs> sure. Hey, Scott, how you doing today? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. Um, like Steve said, he doesn't overthink the first couple of days of spring ball. How do you guys view it as players? Is it just good to get out and, and go? Yeah, you know, it's good because we were talking about it today. There's a difference between being in shape and being in football shape. I mean, it's just unless you've played football, it's kind of hard to explain. But there's a different stamina between, you know, plays, getting the call lined up, all that. So it's nice. Scott, this is Kelly Lyle from the Fort Collins, Colorado. I wanted to ask you a little bit about when you were looking for where – to come as a graduate transfer, what the big factors were in it? How much of it was football? How much of it was academics? What were the big things you weighed pro and con? Um, it was all football. I mean, I knew wherever I was going to go, I was going to try and get a master's at the least. Um, but for me, you know, I had a lot of schools reach out to me, power five, but there was a huge comfort with Coach Dazio. And then I kind of went and looked at, all right, who's looking at me, what can they offer me as far as, you know, I wanted a minimum of 60 snaps a game is what I told uh, all the coaches that I was looking at, you know. Um, so right off the bat, that cuts some of the schools down. That's okay, you know, because I found the perfect spot for me. That's all that mattered. Um, but then the second thing I looked at was, you know, having a trust with the coaching staff, you know, for it being 
what we planned on was my last year, but obviously COVID hit and then extended that a little bit, right? But, um, and then the third thing was, you know, a position coach that had a plan as far as development. Um, so that meaning all, you know, phases of being a defensive end for my position. And I wanted to really capitalize on reminding everybody that I could be a really good pass rusher, which I felt like I kind of got into that first and second down role at UM. And that's kind of where I got stuck. And I wasn't really satisfied with just being a first and second down player. I thought I could really elevate, my, elevate myself and be a, a good pass rusher. So that's what I'm still striving to do. And how excited are you to have another year now from what you thought you were going to have? As obviously, you, you could have chosen a lot of different things, but you chose to come back. And how much can that help in what your long-term goals are to maybe play in the NFL? I mean, they can only help, right? I mean, more film, more opportunities to really show everybody uh, what I can do and showcase myself in general. So I think from that standpoint, too, I really enjoy being around, you know, this great group of, you know, coaches that we have here. Um, you know, they have a philosophy. You got to coach guys hard, but to coach them hard, you got to love them harder, you know. And I really appreciate that because I've had my fourth head coach. I had came in with Al Golden. It was Mark Richt. Main, yeah, fourth. So fourth head coach. Uh, in college, I know, been in college a long time. I'm the Van Wilder of college, <laughs> as far as football goes. I know you all like that one. But, um, Love that movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great movie. But um, no, so I really appreciate being around them. And then, you know, like my house, the people I live with and the people I'm close with on the team, like I love our group. Like I hang out with, you know, Manny and Toby a lot. Um, and then my house is the grad transfer group, you know. Um, it's Ham Ready, you know, it's Elijah Johnson and Adam Carruth. So, I mean, all of us in there, it's just – you can't get a better house, I don't think. I think I live with the best group of guys on the, on the team. When, when you look at that, like who you, who you live with, it's all veteran players. Mm -hmm. What's the difference for spring ball for a veteran like you guys as opposed to younger guys on the team? Well, we come home and we talk ball. Like that's the one thing. I don't think it just, you know, a lot of guys say, you know, leave your, I don't want to phrase this. A lot of the times as a football player, when you walk onto the field, you're told to leave all that baggage from the outside world at the gates before you walk through. Um, for, for us, it's like the exact opposite in regards of when we walk off the field, we're bringing it home with us. We're talking about this play. You know, that play, well, we're going into depth about it. We're talking about different techniques, all that. And then we're joking about it, too, because it's just a group of smart guys, like you said, veteran guys that I think, you know, really understand what it takes to be you know, a good football player. So we can joke about the little details in there, too. When you look at that defensive front, though, it's not just you that came back. Hub came back. Manny came back. Um, mm -hmm. How excited are you about what you guys can continue off what you did last year? Um, I mean, we're just looking to build on it. It was only a small sample size of four games, obviously. So there's already questions and doubts about, well, can they sustain it for an entire year? Um, so that's really what's on our mind, is sustaining that for the entire 12 game plus one or two, whatever we can get extra after that, and then kind of, you know, just – setting the standard for Colorado State at that point. And really, I think that kind of is, you know, a good representation of, you know, the type of leader we have in this room with uh, Coach Antoine Smith, you know, obviously stemming from Coach Chuck Dieter and Coach Dazio. Yeah, obviously, there were a lot of cancellations, distractions last year. With that in mind, how is the defensive line able to kind of stay locked in, still kind of bring everything together despite all the COVID stuff and whatnot? Um, you know, you're going to have Cam ready up here and he's going to dispute this, but I think we just have the greatest room on the team as far as guys that, guys that really just, you know, I think enjoy being around each other. And, you know, I think it was just honestly a perfect match of personalities in our room enough between, you know, leaders like me, Toby and Manny um, to really kind of set the standard of, all right, we're going to come and watch this day and we're going to hammer out this, this and that. All right, that game got canceled on to the next. You know, we really can't sit there, you know, there's no time to be, you know, you got you got like a couple minutes to be angry about it, but then it's all right. Flip so a switch to the next team. Like, who are we up next? You know, who's up next? Who's who are we gonna play? Let's go watch the Tennessee. Let's go watch who's their starting uh, who's their starting five. Who's been in the last couple of games? You know, we're watching film from there on. I mean, we're just going at it from that angle. Scott, kind of a joking question for you here, but I saw you tweeting about the new NCAA football uh, game that's coming out soon, the video game. What do you think your rating in that would be? Oh. A loaded question let's just be honest <laughs> I could go the obnoxious route of giving myself a 99 I could sit there with like, you know high 80s you know respectful I, I think I would in a safe way give myself high 80s for sure I think I'm higher than that but I won't say that that's humble that's fair who would you guys rate me I give you 90s 
90s? You had a sack right. every game. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Go 90s then. He'd been what, about, what, about Cam, what about Cam Reddy? Because he's over here. I personally would give him probably about a 73. I, I just think personally <laughs> his one blocking skills are not so <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Your mic points and your awareness, dude. I mean, you're up there. You're a 99 awareness. <laughs> Is he throwing stuff at you yet? <laughs> Over here, who let me hold the press conference? <laughs> I was going to say, this is going to be a fun night at home for you guys, isn't it, now? Oh, I mean, Cam's probably not going to talk to me for another five hours, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Scott. I appreciate your thanks, time. Scott. You guys have a good one. Thanks. Little skirmish going off on off say. camera. Yeah. Hey guys, hey Cam, you just gonna let that hang there in the ether? Or should we give you a chance to uh, defend yourself right now? Oh yeah, you know you can't you can't entertain too much. You know, Patch is Patch. You gotta let him. You gotta let him rock a little bit. <laughs> just let it roll. Like I asked him, I mean, like Steve mentioned it. You know, spring camp means something different for the veterans, and it does. The, the younger guys on the team. For a guy like yourself, what are your main goals in spring? Yeah, I think some it's sometimes it's different for older guys and younger guys, but in a lot of ways it's the same. You know, it's it's taking to where wherever you are <clears throat> and it's taking just finding a way to incremental steps and getting better. You know what I mean? So whether you know you're one of the more elite guys on the team, like whoever you are, you know, a McBride brother, whatever, they're still trying to find ways to get just a little bit better each day, you know. Cam, I asked Scott this a little bit too, but uh, as somebody who came in here as a graduate transfer and all, what are the things you were looking for as a graduate transfer? How much of it was football? How much of it was academics? How much of it was playing time, coaching staff? Just what were the primary things you were seeking once you decided you were going to go somewhere else to finish out your career? Yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously a big decision, you know, so you got to you got to think it out. You got to know your motives and why you want to go where you want to go. And when I got in the portal for me, I mean, I came in as a walk on, you know, so that's obviously part of it. You know, you want to be a scholarship player. You want to earn that uh, coach does. was at a new place, you know, so you don't know, but maybe that's in the air. And I think, you know, if you can play for coach does, especially as an old lineman, you go do it. You know, so I was pretty grateful that worked out. But football definitely drove it. Was there, what, what was the academic part piece of it or was there even much of one? Was it more, let's find the right fit football and the rest will kind of work itself out? Yeah, I think you, you try to get as much as you can in a decision, you know what I mean? So you'd love if you can get the academics too. Of course, Boston College is a great academic school, but I was lucky that it worked out, you know, happy to be at Colorado State as far as academics go. So it's like, you try to get as much of each piece as you can while it's still being, you know, you focusing on your primary factor, which was football. Steve said he doesn't put uh, he didn't hold a lot of stock the first two days. Was it just good to get out there um, and get playing again? Yeah, yeah, it was. It, it kind of felt like a long time, even though I guess it wasn't a super long time. The season went a little bit late, but you know it felt like a long time not playing, and it, it was really good to get back. We're working the detail. That's that's the most you can do, you know, on these like these non padded days, and you can work your hands, your feet, be exact in your work, and it, it felt it felt really good being out there as a full team. And Steve had mentioned he thought off-season workouts were really, really well. What were your feelings coming out of uh, out of off-season workouts, and, and did that kind of carry into today? I think it, it definitely carried into today. I think it was a super successful winter for us. I, mean, I can't say enough about our strength staff. They, they're awesome. I've had them since uh, – most of them since I was at BC, and uh, they're, they're unbelievable. They got us ready. I feel super in shape and, you know, they keep taking us to different levels. You know, guys are getting bigger, guys are getting stronger. So it's pretty exciting. Some new staff members in the mix though, just how did that kind of feel just players to coaches out there compared to the start of spring last season, maybe? Yeah. I mean, last spring for me, everything was new, you know, so <clears throat> we've had a couple new, we've had a couple of new pieces this time around. And obviously like there's a little bit of an adjustment factor there, but uh, you know, I just think that, They've done all a great job of kind of gelling, working together. We're putting in extra time, making sure we bridge that gap for the relationship. And yeah, it's, it's been very kind of seamless. Cam, you guys with the new coordinator, has there been a lot of big changes or is it 
pretty much just stay the course with maybe some tweaks that uh, John's bringing in that he, from Wisconsin, or is it there's some wholesale change going on in the offense? Yeah, I mean, I think we'll see that more and more as the spring goes on, but he's obviously got his own things that he likes, you know, and that we're going to, you know, probably integrate some different flares here and there. And, um, but I mean, it's, you know, it's, we're running our offense, you know. To no huge changes at this would, point, at least in the playbook. Oh yeah, I wouldn't say any huge ones, no. But I mean, obviously new coach or not, you're always looking for new things to do based on personnel change, whatever. So, I mean, there's always going to be some, some changes, you know. And then just how excited are you to have the same unit back? I mean, you guys, you really get a chance to kind of grow together in this offense to develop, to continue what you built upon last season without yeah. a whole lot of new pieces fitting in. Yeah, I love it. Um, I think, you know, as you get closer, it gets more and more fun. You know, you become brothers, you get really close and guys coming from all different kinds of places. At first, that's difficult. It doesn't mean you're not getting along. It's just you don't know everybody as well as if you're there you know, time matters, you know, and I think we're seeing that right now. We saw that today and I'm super happy. Everybody was able to, you know, we were able to keep everybody. Okay. Thanks, Cam. We'll let you go home and uh, ignore Scott now for the next five hours. Yeah. Yeah. You can't give that guy too much, you know, 99. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) Take care. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks guys. Yeah. Thanks Mike. Mike, see you at basketball or. Yeah. Yeah. Now that I have no tennis. Cool. So see you guys later. See you guys. See ya. See ya. Thanks.